Once we've picked out what our piping system is going to look like and what our pump is that we're going to put into that piping system, we can look at their characteristics to predict the combined performance when we actually put them together. So we used some of this information in the selection process to pick the pump that would be enough to supply the uh, requirements for the pipe. But let's go back and see what we actually get when we hook things up. The piping system will have a characteristic curve like this. It's got to have some elevation or pressure component that it's overcoming to do useful work. And then there's going to be an additional element of friction that's going to increase with increasing flow rate. So this is the head required to drive a particular amount of flow through a particular uh, arrangement of piping. Now, based on what we wanted to accomplish with this pipe, we knew that we wanted to get this flow at this head. We went and selected a pump that was large enough to be able to deliver that capability. So this is our pump curve. And it's also a head, oops, a head flow curve. Flow on this axis, head on this axis here. And the two of them combined together, we can put on the same axes and find the intersection point between these two curves. If this is what the pump can do, and this is what the piping requires, then where those two lines cross is the point where things will actually operate. Now let's think a little bit about how it's going to get there. And let's look at this larger curve here. We've got the head, we've got the flow, we've gotten rid of all the other complicated stuff that's on the manufacturer's diagram, and we've got just the head flow relationship for the pump that we're going to use. We've taken this off the manufacturer's curve. We've ignored the other impeller sizes. We've only got the impeller size that we're going to use. So this is our pump that we've picked and with the impeller size that we've picked. And this is our pipe with all of its fittings and everything as we've designed it. And when we put them together, this is where we expect our operating point to be. Now let's think about this system. It's turned off to start with. And there's a check valve so there's no flow going backwards. And I, so we start off with zero flow and we switch on the pump. And the pump spins up to speed. And now the pump is producing this much head and there's no flow in the piping system. So that's the back pressure from the elevation. So we've got the pump pushing harder than is necessary to make the flow move. So that causes some acceleration. The flow will increase and we'll have a little more loss in our piping system, not much so far, but start having some losses in our piping system and our pump is operating here. We've still got this difference between what the head is that's provided by the pump and what the piping requires to overcome the flow. So we've got an unbalanced force on the water in the in the piping system. So we're going to continue to accelerate that water and it's going to go faster. Now we've got higher losses so the difference here between what the pump can produce and what the uh, piping system requires is getting smaller so the force that's accelerating the water in the pipe is smaller. So it's going to move not quite as far in increasing the flow in our next little iteration. Uh, but we're still going to see the flow increasing. But the difference between what the pump is providing to push the flow and the head with the uh, piping system is resisting with, this gap is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So eventually we'll move to the point here where we've got no difference between what the pump is delivering and what the resistance of the piping is. So now we've got no unbalanced forces on the water in the pipe. We've got an exact balance between the elevation and the, and the losses against what the pump is putting in. And that's a stable operating point. Now, of course, if we were accelerating and somehow we managed to get out to that operating point, and I can't really picture quite how, we'd have the inverse difference. The losses are now much higher than what the pump is putting in and the flow will tend to move stably back towards this operating point. So we always expect once the pump and the and the piping system are in equilibrium that we'll wind up back at this operating point where those two lines cross. And once we know what that operating point is we can figure out what our actual flow is going to be that goes through the piping system. 
It may not be what we designed for. It may be uh, something rather different than that. We might have designed for over here, but because we picked a pump that was somewhat oversized, if we just switch things on, we wind up operating out here. Now, if we wanted to change that, well, we can't get this piping curve to move down so that it's even easier to flow without actually building new piping. The resistance is built in there by the diameter of the pipe and the valves and fittings that we put in there. But if we've got a piping system that's got a control valve in it, we can always increase the resistance in the piping system. So we'll start with the same elevation difference that we have to overcome, but we might be able to start closing down a valve and get a response curve like that, or like that, or like that, or like that, as we keep close, closing up the valve a little further. So there we are, closing a valve. And again, as long as we do this relatively slowly, we're going to be moving along this pump characteristic curve with the increasingly uh, resistant piping system, always delivering enough to overcome the elevation and pressure, and delivering more and more to overcome the friction as we're increasing the resistance of the piping system. So that's the fundamental idea of the combined performance between the pipe and the, and the pump. And the key thing to recognize here is that we'll always be operating somewhere on that pump characteristic curve. We may not be operating at our design condition. And for all of the conditions where we think we might operate, we'll have to evaluate the consequences of operating at those locations and see what comes out.